Here's what I'd like to have said. If, if this right here represents KW, meaning that, and, and this is how much big data we have, okay, um, where would our competitors be? Now, this is, this is big data that is connected. Where would our competitors be? And what's the answer? Every one of them, this is it. Because they haven't connected the data. One of the, blessings that, one of the blessings that we had, and oh, by the way, and if we just change this to artificial intelligence and then said, okay, if this represents what Keller Williams has done with artificial intelligence for the industry, um, where are our competitors? What's the answer? Okay. So it's really interesting that as we move into this space, which is the space of innovation around AI uh, uh, and big data, there are very few real estate businesses that have positioned themselves to play that game. Okay? Now, let me give you an example about uh, big data and AI. So I want you to imagine that uh, tomorrow, tomorrow morning, uh, you woke up and you, you had a, a bite on your arm or a, a red, uh, just a big a dot, okay? We don't even know it's a bite, right? And you pull out your medical app, you take a picture of it, and you load it right into your medical app. And immediately, within nanoseconds, you get back, it comes back up and it says, we have a 99% uh, 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 accuracy prediction that that is a brown recluse bite. And we have a 100% cure rate when you do these three things. And we have your medical records, and we've already, we know what you're allergic to and not. We've already ordered um, your medicine, and it will be at your house by 5 o'clock today. Follow the instructions. Number two, draw a circle around it so in case the medicine doesn't work and it gets outside the circle that we'll know that. Number three, we looked at your Google Calendar and we notice that you have time available at 4.30 today, and the doctor does too, and we've preset an appointment for you two to talk by phone, or you can come into the office, either your choice, just click yes, and, and tell us whether it's phone or in person. You get that? Yep. It, it's, it's, the, it's, it's you going to a lawyer saying, I've got a legal issue, and the lawyer turns around and puts that into the database, and it comes back and says, um, we've just gathered all of the all of the court cases on your issue, and over the last you know 50 years or whatever, and we have found there are 15 that match your situation. We've tested that against your variables, and we have found three instances that really speak to that. Um, we've pulled out what those are. I've listed those, and I've printed it for you. Here are the seven things that we need to talk about to make sure that we do the best job possible. Do you get that? Okay. So it's not just the real estate industry. Literally the entire, there is a race going on right now in literally every industry there is. And that is who can accumulate the most data and who can attach that to artificial intelligence that can pull insight, make decisions, and or do tasks based on that information. I would say, do you have any questions? But that would be really, that wouldn't work well, would it? Right? Okay. So that's what AI and big, that's what AI and big data actually represents right now for us, is it represents who's going to, so in our industry, it's who's going to have the most connected. And when we say connected, that means data that talks to each other. You would expect that Realogy or Zillow um, would be the two leading candidates, if you will, uh, Realogy meaning all of their brands, right, would have the most data on real estate, yes or no? You would expect that. Here's their problem. It's not connected. In other words, they never anticipated that they would, it would need to talk to each other, right? It's just like Berkshire Hathaway. Uh, their big challenge is that when they went out and um, uh, uh, grew, they grew by buying companies and they left everything intact. So they left the entire operating system of those businesses intact, meaning that the data doesn't talk to each other. 
in Remax, they still have franchisees that send in their, their numbers by paper. In other words, the industry by and large just got flat, caught flat-footed as it walks into this issue right here. Okay? Now, you have a choice, right? Depending upon what you did, and that is... Um, if you can grab that, then you get to play in this game, phase three. And if not, then your business does that or your business does that. So this whole issue of what's going to happen in the real estate industry, that has not played out yet. Okay? That's going to play out in real time in the next two years, most likely. So when I said that you're going to... I, again, I stood at the family reunion I said, uh, a year from now, you're not going to recognize the real estate industry. And again, at the time... Um, I, don't, I don't know that, that, that um, people understood what I was saying, um, but um, I think you're beginning to understand it now. You're, you're beginning to, as, as, as you hear the Zillows announce that they're going into the mortgage business, when you, right, so they're, they're, they're going to they're gonna abandon or add on to their media approach. Instead, we're not just going to generate leads, we're now going to actually go direct, directly to the consumer. Number two, we're going to have a brokerage license. Yes, we're required to do it. Yes. And then they're thanking the commission for making them get it so they can blame them, right? Yes? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And they're going to become an iBuyer, so they're going to get in between you and the seller and the buyer. Now, I'm not painting them as evil. I'm just stating actually facts. You can draw your own conclusions about whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. But those are the facts that are happening, okay? The, the blessing that Keller Williams had in all this is a thing called profit sharing. And that is because we share the income back in the organization uh, as an operating model, we also had to have all the data to make sure that everything was done in the proper way. As a result, all we had to do was literally rechange the, the plumbing a little bit uh, and set it up so that we could receive all that data in a manner that we could build that. So, if someone were going to start this, Josh, and they were going to start building um, uh, a pipeline a, 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 of big data and put it into a, a cloud service, how long would that take them? Once they had the data, it would take them between two and three years to start to build a platform using that data in a real estate specific manner. Yeah, and I didn't trust his statement. So we, Google was in our, uh, not that I don't trust you, but... Uh, you were inspecting what you expect. Yeah, I guess, yeah. So we had Google in our offices one day and in front of uh, Josh and, and, and um, some others of our amazing uh, tech leadership team. I just turned to them and said, how long would it take to do this if you're just getting started? And their answer was? Two to three years. Yeah. They said, they said if you're just getting started. So when Keller, when Keller Williams announced that it was building, uh, that it had built a cloud service, that it had done all of this, you immediately, all of a sudden, you heard Berkshire Hathaway announce that they were going to go do that. Recently, I guess in the last week or two, we just now hear that Remax is going to do that. So I'll be waiting for all those apologies from everyone who made fun of me and said I was an idiot. I'm still waiting for Notorious Bob, or whatever his name is, to, to write me an apology. The, yeah, the interest, yeah, 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 yeah. The interesting thing is that in, in that particular famous blog, this individual... Um, uh, very self-importantly said uh, that when Google calls, let him know. And we just kind of chuckled because Google had already called and... Four times. Had already called four <laughs> times. And we were actually, uh, were, were considered a, a test case um, for what we were doing. And here this guy didn't know what he was saying, right? So. By the way, phase three is, is when the change occurs. So this is, by the way, the battle that's going on in your industry right now. And that is, who's going to get the data and what are they going to do with it with artificial intelligence? Now, I've heard a lot of people, and, and by the way, I was even asked this as an inman, and that is, say, well, are you going to have the data? And I, I hear that question, and my, my first response is, I'd like to meet the idiot that asked the question. But, and the reason, that's, but it, that wasn't my response. That was just my inner thought. Um, someone's going to own the data, dadgummit. I mean, to, to say, are you going to own it? I want to come back and say, well, okay, well, you pick somebody. 
it can't be you you don't have enough data there's the challenge that the individual real estate agent has and even the individual real estate company has is that you don't have enough data to be a big enough data set to have any insight worth having that's the problem the, the dilemma is is that you and I have to pick someone someone to have our data now I'm happy for you to all right now write down on the sheet of paper who you want to own your data that you trust won't sell you out and then submit it and I'll read those from here you all want to do that let's just go through the list do you want Zillow to have it do you want realtor.com to have it do you want okay do you want Google to have it you trust Facebook okay how about Amazon let's pick them okay you want Trulia to have it well you're running out of names let's let your competitors have it well, yeah there you go well I, I I'd like to say us right I'd like to say we have it right the, look every day you get to vote with your feet if you if you think that we're wrong you can walk out and not be a part of this so I understand that I, I understand the relationship I understand that every day we have to earn the right to be in business with you and we take that very seriously so someone's got to own the data if we had a better place I'd have gone there absolutely if do you think I wanted to be a technology company no and you sure didn't want to build a CRM <laughs> no I've, I've avoided this I've tried not to be this um, I've tried not to be this right yeah I thought it was really interesting that someone uh, was it I guess it was Realogy went out publicly and said well we're a real estate company and I thought to myself no you're not real estate agents are real estate companies real estate offices are real estate companies you're a service provider dumb twit so is Keller Williams I mean to say that right I mean we we yes we're we're not really a real estate company in that sense you're the real estate industry we we are your partner but we're not the industry okay and oh by the way they just announced they're spending 200 million dollars to go build right. technology into <laughs> sounds like a technology company to me but whatever okay <laughs> yeah yeah okay and then number four is when all of a sudden you have to do it all over again